Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how Microsoft has taken it upon themselves in .NET 8 to add the native guard clauses in .NET. Now usually for guard clauses you would either write something yourself or you would reference a NuGet package. But for those of you who don't want to use a NuGet package, this will be very very interesting because they added quite a few and I think they're going to add more. If you like the of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsters.com. Now before I move on, I just want to quickly let you know that I'm running my two-day in-person workshop from zero to hero effective testing in c sharp in several conferences this year for now the announced ones are ndc london dotnet days in romania and ndc oslo with ndc copenhagen and ndc porto being announced very soon and i'm very happy to say that ndc is actually giving me a ticket to give away to any of you for any of the ndc's you'd like to attend so click that link in the description to sign up for the giveaway in those two days we're covering unit testing mutation testing integration testing and performance testing and we're setting the right foundation and showing the best practices that you should be using when you're testing your .NET projects. Speak with your manager and I really hope to see you there. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple console application over here. And as you can see, it is using .NET 8 both here and also if I go to the CS proj here, .NET 8, and it will compile using .NET 8. Now in .NET 6, if I remember correctly, we got the argument null exception dot throw if null method. So if something in here was coming in and it was null. Actually, this is a bad example. Let's say that this is a nullable string, for example, and it was pushed in here and I run this, then as you can see, this would effectively work as a null check and throw on the spot. So it will say value could not be null parameter text. And if you remember in C sharp 11, we were supposed to get the bang bang operator, which was scrapped, but it would give the same experience. It would throw when a value was null. Now in .NET 7, we actually got another one of these methods. In the argument exception class, you can now have a throw if null or empty. And this is specific to strings. So if I pass down the same text over here, and you just want to check that something was null or empty and then throw, then you can use this and it's going to give you the same experience. And the interesting thing about this is that even though it has a second parameter to provide the name of the parameter itself, because in .NET 6, we also got the caller argument expression, this is all done for us at compile time and we don't have to worry about this. In fact, if I compile this and I go to the IL viewer and show you the lowered C sharp over here, so I'm going to say high level C sharp, then as you can see, the text is added because it is detected by the original parameter, even though the variable itself is inlined and removed because we know at compile time that this is null. So all that we already have in .NET 7. But now what we also get is a set of throw methods in the argument out of range exception class. Now, I don't know in general how I feel about this sort of thing, where the adding the throw methods into the exception classes themselves, I would personally prefer them to be somewhere else consolidated, but I sort of get the point because the logic is that's the type of exception you will throw, so it does make sense. And now we got seven new methods in here, and I think we're missing two, but I'm going to talk to you about that in a second. So first, we have the throw if zero method. So if you have a parameter, in this case, let's say int a equals zero, and that parameter is passed down, then we're going to get an argument out of range exception. And it has a very nice message saying A, because it does detect the variable name, it still uses that same caller argument expression over here, must not be zero parameter A. Then we have a set of two other parameters, and those are throw if negative and throw if negative or zero. Those now exist in the framework. The interesting thing about this is that there is no, as of the time of recording of this video, and again, this is all in alpha, this can change, there is no throw if positive or throw if positive or zero. So that is a bit interesting. I guess it's more likely you're going to check for a negative, especially when you deal with something like money. But if you're running negative, you might as well just add positive, right? What's the point? And let's just see how those things fail. So if something is negative and I run it, then the message says this must be a non-negative value. And at this point, it all ends. And if I go on and I run it again with zero in the throw, if negative or zero, then it must be a non-negative and non-zero value. So exactly what you'd expect here. Now, the next two methods are actually the throw if greater than and throw if greater than or equal. You can have a positive and a negative. So in this case, it's going to throw. The parameter names are a bit vague. I wish they were better. Currently, their value and other. But if I just go ahead 
and I run this, then the exception I'm getting is positive must be less or equal to 10. So it reads in the opposite way. So it's greater than, so it's less or equal. I personally wish for the error message to actually reflect what the method reads. So if it is greater than, then the error will be whatever should be greater than whatever else, because it's a better experience. Now I have to do the negation in my head. In the beginning, when I first saw this, it was like, do they have a bug in the system? And it's the same thing with the other method. If I run this, must be less than 10, because positive being less than the negative, then it means that it will throw if the opposite happens. So if it is greater than or equal to. Again, I wish for the exception messages to read as the methods read. This doesn't really make sense to me. And the last thing here is actually the opposite. So throw if less than and throw if less than or equal. And interestingly enough, if I run this, then the error message is negative must be greater than or equal to 10 which is the same naming scheme as before. Again, I'd prefer if this was reading more the way the method reads and the exception should be should be less than or must be less than whatever. Now, what I want to show you is what's ultimately the outcome of something like this, because Microsoft doesn't just add those things for us to use, they add them for them to use. So as you can see in the .NET runtime repository where the runtime for .NET lives, these methods are already being used. So throw if less than, throw if greater than, and so on. And they will be used more and more in the same way, like with the bang bang operator, where Microsoft went ahead and they replaced everything to use this. This will also be used, as you can see over here, in many, many places. And I recommend that you go ahead and you use this if you don't want to bring an extra dependency. And this will be one of the most performant ways you can go about it because it's very straightforward. The addition of the name is purely compile time, that thing I showed you with the color argument expression. So I would highly recommend you take a look at this in .NET 8 and you start migrating everything to that. And I hope to see more methods, especially the throw with positive because we have negative, we don't have... Anyway. What do you think? Do you think we needed this? And do you think Microsoft should be working on something like this? Or do you think that this should be purely something that the library authors should be dealing with and then make a new bit package for us to use? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me fully, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.